Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is a Jewish believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. God has blessed him with so many titles, such as pastor, doctor, CEO, United States Marine, author, and TV show host. But I am sure that his titles that he's most proud of is husband and father. And beginning January 1st, you'll be able to catch him and this multifaceted man on TLC's newest reality show, The Sisterhood. And here today to talk about his many facets, I want you to help me welcome Dr. Brian S. Lewis to the show. How you doing, Brian? <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I thank you for having me um, on your program, which is awesome. And I just want to compliment you on um, your spirit of excellence. And I see all the things that you do. And I'm really appreciative of what you're doing and how you're advancing the kingdom of God. And it's an honor and a privilege to be here, and I thank God for your listeners as well. Ah, oh, thank you so much. What a blessing. And you're doing big things. As I said, you are um, a multifaceted man, and even just reading your bio and seeing all the things that God has blessed you to do and for you to still remain humble is wonderful. And we're all going to be able to see all these many facets wrapped up in one man beginning next week because your life is getting ready to change beginning next week. Are you ready for that change? Are you ready to be uh, on the small screen? I had, I had believed that I was. And then um, yesterday, uh, TLC has put the uh, full episode of episode one on their website. Oh. And um, I was heartbroken. Um, I'm heartbroken of what I've seen in the other cast members. I'm heartbroken by uh, how they uh, manipulated editing. I mean, I can get into it with you. Uh, I would say that the show is, in some points, is not even suitable for children. And that me being on the airwaves today, I am sorry for doing this show. Hmm. Uh, I want to publicly repent to the body of Christ and say that I did not know how these other people would behave or act. I can tell you how I came about being on the show and even discuss some of the things that are in the actual first episode that are not correct. And I wasn't prepared for Christians to be backbiters, rumor mongers, gossips, not pastors, not first ladies. I mean, I'm not ignorant. ignorant. I've been around, but I had such high hopes for this show to be something that was going to be a takeaway show and maybe with Tara and I it still may possibly be because we're doing our best to maintain a level of Christian integrity in the show but what you'll see is they basically edit everything godly out and then they only keep in what would be controversial or conflict or sensationalized now some things are very real that some of these other people do but I'm just really at a loss I, at first, had felt that the show, in many aspects, was an abomination. Mm. And um, I'm trying to see that, okay, this is episode one, and hopefully it goes somewhere. But I realize that the people behind this, and I don't want to say the names mm -hmm. of the networks or anything, mm -hmm. because there's, it's, it's not going to do anything to bring them into us. But they're not here to... Um, evangelize. They're not in the soul winning business. They're not here to preach the gospel. They are here to make money. And the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And so really what we're seeing is a classic struggle of good and evil. In this uh, uh, reality based show, it is, uh, while it is uh, a docu-series, it's not necessarily accurate. While it is unscripted it doesn't mean that people have not been fed lines many times we have to turn and say no we're not going to say that no we're not going to do that and it's a very difficult process because our faith is being challenged mm -hmm. and we're going to be scrutinized by three levels of people we're going to be scrutinized by what whom i call the disciples these are people who are not just believers but they're true disciples of jesus christ meaning they live for him day in day out they have given their lives to him. Then you're going to deal with believers, people that believe. Even the demons believe and tremble. So there's so many people that believe, but they just attach Jesus to everything else they want to do. And so while they believe, they still remain unregenerate and not 
being processed through sanctification, and then you have the world. And I don't think the world is even going to understand this. And at the end of the day, I actually believe that the bigger picture is that the enemy wants to use this show to discredit Christianity. Mm -hmm. And I am so sorry. I, I, I'm so sorry that if that's what happens. All I know is that I did my best to give my best on this show to show that we had a strong marriage, that maybe Tara and I had been through things in the past, suffered you know, difficulties as it related to just communication. That's been our biggest issue in life. It hasn't been the big adultery or any of these difficult things that some others have to deal with. Ours have been just being able to communicate effectively and submit to the Word of God equally. And I think that many people experience that. Our hope in this was to show that, look, you can have a strong marriage after 16 years when you know, over 50% of uh, Christian marriages end in divorce, that we can have a strong family, that you can be multicultural, multiracial, and that you can't be a born-again Jewish man married to a, a phenomenally beautiful Christian black woman and have a successful life. What is hurtful <clears throat> for me is a few things. Um, I don't want to stop you if you want to ask me any questions. No, you're going. I'm, I'm going to let you just pour your heart out. It's okay. <laughs> um, the first thing is this, is that I love them showing Tara and I in the gym, and that's how we really interact. That's how we relate. Um, you know, we always joke, I'm, I'm the black one, she's the Jewish <laughs> one, you know, that we just, we are who we are with each other, and I think that's great. When we had dinner at uh, the Murray's, Anthony and Christina, uh, we had a lot of fun. We were asked about why we got fired, and the truth about why I got fired was this. We came here to be senior pastors of a church that was in transition, and they wanted change. And I paid my way out here, and I was willing to take a pastoral offering once a month. Um, you know, we have a certain level of income, so it was, it was okay, and it was a dream come true, and we were willing to invest and sow that seed because we really believed in that work. We were set in the church as senior pastors. But what happened was within a week of moving into our home, we got approached to do the show and found out within three weeks that they wanted us to do the show. We brought it to our leadership. Both of them were 75 years old. I don't want to say they're elderly, but they're older and they have a different mindset. And maybe even their opinion of reality television was the right one to have because I think in looking at episode one, they're going to feel right in releasing us. But they said that they didn't want us to be a part of the show. I said to them, well, what if my wife does it and then I don't do it? No, if you guys decide to do the show, then you can't work here. And so we had not signed the contract. In a process of a few weeks of back and forth meetings, still had not signed the contract. I was not going to give up being a senior pastor. That's what I came out here to do. The reality show wasn't as important to me. Well, we wound up getting a letter, which I gave to the production company. I don't know if they'll use it. But I was released based on one statement that said, um, due to the inability to reach a congruent purpose, we're going to exercise our 60-day notice and release you. And that was very difficult because they didn't want to be involved in the reality show, and they felt that if we did it, it would be negative to them. They preemptively released us because I was doing like uh, – you know, I'm not going, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, and you, and you, and you, you're going to love me. So I wasn't going to quit. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm not going, you know, to pull me out of here. I mean, you know, because this was my big dream. Even though we had ministry in Los Angeles, it was very hard ground. We were more well known than we were attended. And it was a very difficult time and season in my life. So this was my big dream. Well, anyway, the dream had to shift. Anyway, at the dinner, you know, they want to know why. Because it, it doesn't make sense, right? Most people think, well, why did he get fired after six weeks? What did he do? Did he sleep with somebody? Did he steal? <laughs> did he do that? No. The fact of the matter was I was approached to do a show, and based upon that and the fear of the leaders of the church, they decided to release us. It was wrong. It was hurtful. It took me a lot of time to get over it. If I had a few hours, I could tell you about all the little betrayals we've experienced, but I don't have that level of time so I could just say that I told them in scene that it was because we couldn't agree on purpose but they used their interviews they used editing they used scenes where women gossiped about it and said something must be wrong and something doesn't smell right and how they come from LA and then there's another scene 
with that dinner where, um, you know, for me, I've always kind of dealt with the spirit of rejection. I think a lot of people can understand that. I preach on it a lot because I understand it so well. And it's one of those things where you almost have to always work at not um, coming under the power of rejection. And the most rejected person on the face of the planet was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, he's the only one that never came under the power of it, but the Bible says he was rejected. Even on the cross, he said, My Father, my Father, why have you forsaken me? So he understands our pain in this area. And many of us experience this, and we want to be received, and we want to be liked, and we Mm -hmm. want to be approved of and validated and loved, right? Right. At the end of it, we want to be loved. So I'm I'm making a point here, and my point is simply this. I'm a a funny guy. I like to tell jokes. I can be very serious, but when I want somebody to like me or I want to kind of get close to somebody, I'll make light of something. I'll say something that's funny. And so we were talking about marriage, and this one particular scene, they cut everything out except this. I say something to the effect of, you're not really married unless the cops come to your house, Mm. you know? And who can't identify with the drama? When Tara and I were newly married we've been married for 16 years we had our neighbors call the police on us because we was having some heated fellowship (laughs) were we using profanity no how did tara and i fight we actually used the word of god which i don't recommend because it's like taking your sword and cutting each other you know you don't love me the way christ loved the church well you know you don't respect me the way that the church is supposed to respect christ you know we we did that early on in our marriage now we've really learned to walk in grace but that was real, and we were in process. And, uh, you know, I made a joke about having to call the cops. And so they took that as, like, you know, they put the dark music with it. They edited it. Even one of the cast members called me today and said he couldn't believe that they interchanged his expression with something from a different conversation at the mm. same dinner, you know, to make it look like. And when I say shalom, y'all, I said that early on in the dinner. I didn't say it at the end, so they're trying to make it look like, you know, I'm crazy. And then all these women, which is really sad, uh, the, the three women, the two women that were there and the one that's, you know, a major character, they all had something negative to say, all judged us, condemned us, even had a scene with gossip, rumor mongering, backbiting. You know why I'm sad about this show? For several reasons. One, you are not supposed to sow discord among the brethren. And that's what this show is all about. And then here we are trusting the world with our story, our gospel, and they've edited everything out of it. They have me preaching for a little segment, and the only thing I'm saying is, I'm anointed to speak to Atlanta. I'm anointed to speak to Georgia. I'm anointed to speak to the nation, something along those lines. But I had used scripture right before that. I said, I'm crucified with Christ, and it's not I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And, I mean, I finished the scripture, and there was an anointing there. They have removed everything. We, they don't have us praying over the food. They don't mm. have us doing anything that would be, uh, and I hate to use this word, but traditional as it relates to faith. Right. And show that we do have traditions. And the Bible says that the kingdom of God is in both old and new. You know, a man that pulled out of his treasure some old and new. So not all traditions are bad, you know. And praying over your food, we're instructed to do that in the New Testament and the Old Testament. And, I mean, it's just something that I believe is right to do because we're instructed in both books to do it. But this show is not about showing how godly we are. This show is about trying to destroy each and every one of us, paint Tara as the strong, opinionated Christian, you know, and then the other one, as you know a villain and then some some in between and it's sad and i'm i'm hurt and i'll I'll tell you after i saw it last night it took me a a while to get over it it took me a while to get over it because the only way i could describe it is um i was naive and i feel like i got played Mm -hmm. i really do feel like i got played now i'm hoping to see that over the the uh, course of this that that things change I mean, there's a scene with one young man where he is uh, basically instructing his daughters how to have premarital sex with condoms, and his wife is telling them to check uh, the male genitalia for warts. Mm. So that's what we're dealing with. Now, one of the cast members, I spoke to him. They have a scene with him giving handcuffs to his wife. 
he said that he gave her three gifts that day, and one of them was a gag gift that his church actually gave them at their wedding. He said one of the other gifts was a T-shirt, and that's what he was saying to his wife when he wanted to see her in nothing but the T-shirt. Now, he was kidding when he said, you know, the best nine and a half minutes of your life, but to me, and I realize this, and he's standing on the, the marriage bed is undefiled, I got that. But there's a difference between the privacy of your bedroom and letting the world see. The marriage bed is undefiled, but if you tape it with a, with a video camera or something like that or your iPhone and then put it on the Internet, is the marriage bed still undefiled? <laughs> good question. That's really good. So, I mean, now you're bringing all of this attention into what is intimate and private because I call sex a worship experience, and worship is about intimacy. You know, it's about you and that person becoming one. It's not about everybody else being invited in. Mm -hmm. Now, in the show, you'll see me being cute with my wife, maybe tapping her on the tush, which is the booty, you know, once in a while and being cute because that's what people do. And you should see that people can be real and, and relaxed. But there's a difference between being relaxed and having a level of perversion, having a level of uncleanliness and filthiness. And to me, I have a 10-year-old son, and I, we have a 13-year-old, uh, a 10-year-old, and a 6-year-old. And my 10-year-old son watched the video. I have not had the sex talk with him, but he got a sex talk by watching the sisterhood <laughs> that was ungodly, that was defiling, that was talking about having sex before marriage. And I think that it's... it's, it's uh, it's a crime. It really is a crime to represent Christ and then not really ascribe to his teachings. It's a crime that we, that so many, I've been in Christendom for a long time, and so many people try to use grace as a cloak, as a shield, instead of really allowing grace to change their lives. So many people come to Christ and they want to just stay in one level, one state, and they never want to be sanctified or consecrated. They don't want to be set apart. When my wife went on the Jeff Probst show, Lisa Welchel was the, uh, the co-host, and she said from watching it, it felt like she was watching sinners. Mm. And this is my dilemma. Um, I got a testimony that somebody watched it and felt that Tara and I were hilarious, and that's good, because laughter does good like a medicine. And you have to be able to relate to us, and we want you to relate to us. We are not perfect people. We are imperfect people, you know, preaching a perfect gospel. But we should be living a life that you can see Christ in our lives. You know, we may have failures, and we may have certain struggles. And from the coming attractions, you'll see that, and even in the show, I mean, we came under attack because our kids are biracial. They're Jewish and black. I call them blues. They're black Jews, you know, or they're bluish, <laughs> you know. They're 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 black Jewish, you know. So, or depending on the day, they're jigros, you know. <laughs> but the the thing is this is that we love our kids. We don't go around seeing color, you know. We see it like God sees the content of their heart. We see their character. We're raising them to do what we believe God has called them to do. We believe that our son Trevor is going to be president of the United States. We don't see black as a ghetto stereotype. Is not Barack Obama, President Obama, is he not a black man? Did he not go to the best schools that anyone could go to? Is he not eloquent? Is he not running the free world? Is he not... Uh, somebody that does not have their pants hanging to the ground with a sag and a jerry curl and, and talking and a whole bunch of ebonics. No. And yet he's black. Right? Right. But I think people don't even see him like that. I think they see that him for what he stands for. And I'm not even saying that I'm in agreement with everything that he stands for. But what I do realize and recognize is does he not break the stereotype? We have a black president of the United States. And so what I realized from doing this show, and I hope and I pray not to offend a lot of your viewers, but there is reverse racism. There is discrimination. There's a lot that goes on. I'm a Jewish man, so 
I'm what you call the silent minority. When they asked me what was it like being a white man married to a black lady, I answered and I said, I'm Jewish. I know what it's like to suffer uh, for being Jewish and still feeling like you're on the outside looking in. This is one of the things that drew me to Christianity. When I realized that Jesus himself was a Jew and that this was about my Jewish people and obviously the Gentiles too, but people don't realize this, is that if you are a believer, a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are a true Jew. The Jews, they call themselves Jews, are not the true Jews. The true Jews are the ones that have received Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And Paul talks about it. He says that there are those that are reattached, like myself, who's a Jewish person that comes to Christ, and that those who are grafted in, like yourself, who might be a Gentile, but now you're a true mm -hmm. Jew. You're a true Jew, and your Messiah, when he walked this earth, was a Jewish man. And he had a bar mitzvah, and he did certain <laughs> things, and we did a bar mitzvah. But the way they edit it is I'm saying, welcome to Trevor's Christian bar mitzvah, and then they got, you know, this one character who is, to me, a total disaster. Uh, these people are crazy. Well, you know what my heart was, and what we did with, this, with that was to... to bring together both cultures of the African-American and the Jewish, and then celebrate, celebrate our Christianity. And through this rite of passage at 13, I'm hoping to establish what's called a Christian bar mitzvah, where bar mitzvah simply means son of the covenant, son of the commandment, bat mitzvah, daughter of the commandment, that there's no tradition behind it as it relates to law or legalism it's you know you don't have to do it as a matter of fact when you become 13 you actually are automatically bar or bot mitzvah so you know you're a, a bot mitzvah and really what it is is it's a time to uh, uh, recognize you're coming into manhood or womanhood and a time to celebrate it's similar to um, the Hispanic culture that celebrates quinceañeras mm -hmm. and so this was a time to celebrate our son and put honor on him and then acknowledge who we are, our Jewish heritage, our, you know, Tara's African-American heritage, and our Christian faith. And so this is what I'm saying. When people deliberately attack, and my wife was attacked, you'll see it in the first episode. It's right there on, on the TLC for utilizing the Word of God and being told she would be ineffective and that Jesus didn't even use the Word of God. And this is my thing. Jesus is the Word. He don't have to use it. Everything he speaks is the Word. <laughs> That's why we quote him. Mm -hmm. You know, We quote what he said. And when he was dealing with the religious leaders, he called them dogs, brood of vipers, whitewashed tombs. I've got news for you. There are dogs, brood of vipers, and whitewashed tombs on this show. Mm -hmm. I am convinced. I've dealt with enough people in my life to realize that when people believe what they believe, they won't shift. It's like if somebody sees that their wife was wrong, but that's their wife, they're just going to make an excuse of why it was right and try to manipulate the situation. The devil moves through manipulation. The devil moves through all of the uh, uh, deception and all these different tactics. And it had me so grieved for being on this show. And I know I'm just um, basically venting. But part of me wanted to say, don't watch it. Mm. But now I want to say watch it, but try to watch it with real and true discernment. And hopefully at the end of these eight episodes or ten episodes or however long it really is going to be, that you would see Tara and I emerge as a, as a standard, that that was our heart this whole time was to lift up the name of Jesus. You know, we went into this feeling like at least we could control ourselves. And hopefully these people will be Christians. And if we don't do it, who else is going to do it? Meaning, like, we know ourselves. And we were approached with this opportunity, and we wanted to be able to bring people into a relationship with Christ, be, meaning we were going to be living epistles. And hopefully that's what people see. And the one thing you can't control is editing. I, I was on a talk show, and um, everything that I said about the Lord, they edited out. So I understand how television goes. Um, especially if you're lifting up the name of Jesus and you really think when you watch it on television and you're so proud because you know you lifted him up and when you see it back, it's like everything I said about Jesus, they cut out. You would never even know that I was even mentioning him while I was sitting there on that stage. And that's just sad and how they can manipulate it and turn it into like when you said they cut in that one man's facial expression 
when you said that happened right. at the beginning and that is what they do and i was really praying that this show was they were going to edit it correctly to where we can really see jesus being lifted up you know and i can really hear your heart i can really hear that you are grieved by it and i'm glad that you were able to let people know and give them the real side of your story to let them know we do have to watch it with discernment and that's the thing you have to watch everything with the spirit of well, discernment i felt like this Lady Charmaine, that after I saw how they edited me mm -hmm. and how these women just went for the jugular and made it seem like things were going on, like like um, in, in the scene, like, I don't know, something just ain't right. How can they move here from L.A. and then lose their church job? When they all knew, they all knew the truth, but they decided to just play like they didn't know. Mm -hmm. Say stuff like something in the milk smells funny. Or you're not going to believe. I mean, how could this happen? I don't know. And so what I felt like what really hurt me is that I may never be able to pastor a church again because of this. Mm. That that they uh, might have destroyed my pastoral career because what they wanted to do through editing was like, they're calling the cops. He's losing his job. What happened? Who are the Lewises? And I'm thinking, wait, I was just being funny. You know, they took everything out of context, but then they were also able to, these, these women sold out. They sold out. They said statements that they were fed to say and went with it. And um, Tara and I have so much more going on in our lives. I mean, we have the Mom Fit Corporation um, with uh, our media team. We're working on um, the Dr. Brian Lewis show like, you know, the Dr. Brian show. Mm -hmm. And so I need this show to be a positive that does uplift the Lord, that does show that we are strong, charismatic, Bible-believing Christians, that we believe the Word of God, you know, and that the Word of God is the final authority. There's other people that went on this to revitalize uh, entertainment careers, to grow their churches, uh, to just make a name for themselves and maybe find 15 minutes of fame. But that's not Tara and I. If you really get to know us, you know that we love people. We have a love for the body of Christ. I mean, if you, this is how they know that we are his, by the love we have for one another. Mm -hmm. That you won't see Tara in any of her interviews, because they only interview the wives, disparaging any of the women. But you see all the tricks, all the shenanigans, all the buffoonery, uh, with the three main wives, uh, other than Tara, because the fifth wife, they kind of pulled out of the show in the middle, and they've got a storyline. I can't expose the storylines, but since the first one, since the first one aired, I can go ahead, or, you know, is on the computer, I can go ahead and, and tell you, because it's public, you know, and it's coming attractions public, and so... Anything, I'm sorry my phone is clipping, but <laughs> anything that you want to ask me as it relates to that is, is fine. As it relates to the show? Yeah, or anything in general. I mean, I just, um, I just really pray for the viewership because I knew that the blogs were already um, vilifying the show. Right. And I, I thought, okay, this show, this is, this is me, okay? I thought this show was going to be an answer to reality shows. Uh, I thought that the substance and the content and the way that we conducted ourselves was going to be illuminating, entertaining, but yet be a tool to draw people and say, wow, I really, you know, like I like the way that they're living and these people are for God and I want to know Jesus, you know. I want to know him by, by how they are living. The one thing is this, I wasn't in every scene. I wasn't in every scene with Tara. I wasn't in most of these scenes that you see in the first episode because these are scenes to get people acquainted with the cast. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm not in much of it. And the husbands are more of a supporting role on this show. We're not necessarily main characters. I might be with Tara because pretty much I we did a lot together on the show. But... Uh, you know, she does the interviews, the women do the interviews. You can see the cattiness, even in the interviews. And so um, for me, I'm grieved. I, I, I feel like Jesus. You know, it's like I've got to finish this, but I, I'm almost saying to God, you know, 
you know, take this bitter cup from me. Mm. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The, 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 the worst thing for me is for the believers to feel like we misrepresented the Christ. Now, I have that, a question that, for you, Brian. When you signed okay. up for the show and they told you um, the premise of the show, because I'm sure when they said it was going to be a look into the the lives of first ladies or pastors, and I know that sounds great. So did you all just assume they were going to be highlighting Jesus or did somebody literally sit down and ask the question and say, we want Jesus to be glorified? Will you allow him to be glorified or did you all just assume? Because I know I would have assumed that they would have allowed Jesus. The first thing I thought was, wow, this is, you know, I just moved here and took over church. This is going to be great exposure for the church and for us to grow. You know, this is great. They're going to see what a great church we are what great music we have, what great preaching we have, how great Karen and I are. It's great, you know. <laughs> so that was, that was my number one thought. Uh, then, you know, the show, I think Tara had told you, it was really miraculous how it got sold. Once we got attached to it, it sold. We had no idea it was going to be an ensemble cast. We didn't find out that it was going to be an ensemble cast for, I think, maybe two months. Mm. So we thought... This is us again. We thought that they would show our lives separate and distinct from the others and just go back and forth like, like a, I don't know if you've ever seen those movies where you just film like 10 minutes of them and then 10 minutes of this other family and mm-hmm. then you come back to the mm-hmm. other family. And that's what we thought, you know, and even though I was in the entertainment industry a long time ago in the agent trainee program for ICM, you know, I'm not somebody, this is not my world. My world is now you know, evangelism and, and doing things that are advancing the kingdom of God and, you know, being a man of God and touching people's lives, you know, especially through TV ministry. Right. Um, so I was under the impression that it was going to be a lot more controlled. Um, I wasn't prepared for different cast members and different wives. And I did not watch a lot of reality television until we signed up for the show. And then I started really researching these shows. And and every, there is such a format to the wives' shows. The wives' shows are shock, conflict, contention, strife, discord, argument, mm. um, you know, nothing short of pulling out each other's hair and slapping each other and cursing each other. And it's the, it's the most vile stuff. So I'm thinking this is going to be an answer because we're all going to go on here and we are going to... The world is now, real, we're really going to go into the world, right? We're really going to go into the world. We're going to make a difference, and we're going to have an impact. As a matter of fact, reality television is the new field for evangelism. We're going to go on there, and we're going to let our light shine. <laughs> the problem is this, is you don't realize that they will edit your light out. Yeah, that is so good. <laughs> That's good. They will edit your light out. They will make you look like a fool. They will make you look crazy. Now, they can only use what you give them, but what you don't realize is they could take something, you're wearing the same clothes in the same scene an hour earlier, because remember, these are not five-minute moments. Mm -hmm. These are two, three-hour scenes, Mm -hmm. like the scene with my wife and Dominique and Ivy at the table. She said that was three hours. When my wife came home, you'll see on the show that I have a scar on my forehead, I did not have that before my wife did that scene. When my wife did that scene, she came home at around 10 a.m., something around that time. We talked about that scene for three hours. I hadn't eaten much that day. I went to sleep. I woke up at around 3 a.m. to use the restroom, and we have a long, you'll probably see it on the show, we have a long uh, restroom. I mean, it's like from the commode back to the bedroom is at least 25 feet. Uh, it's like you, you call it an ensuite, you know, the two walk-in closets and the, the his and her sink on separate sides. I mean, it's great. God is blessed. Amen. I'm only saying this to say it from this standpoint that I was so weary that I ran right into the door and I fell back, uh, fell forward rather. If I had fallen backward, I probably would have cracked my head open and I wouldn't have been able to finish the sisterhood. But that was the level of stress that I was under, you know, that level of stress, so weary from from just hearing of the contention that my wife had to go through. And I don't know about other guys, but I'm the kind of guy that if you mess with my wife, 
or my children, it's on and popping. Okay. You know, I'll take you out and pray for your healing later. <laughs> you know, I'm a former Marine, and, you know, usually if somebody wants to mess with me, that's one thing. I probably will try not to get involved in something. But if it's my wife or my children, then I will lay down, I will gladly lay down my life. Mm. You know, and so hearing this, it caused so much hurt and pain and animosity as it related, related to the other cast members cause, because they're not playing by the rules of the word. The, we're supposed to be peaceable. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be merciful. We're supposed to be tenderhearted. We're supposed to fight for the spirit of unity and the bond of peace. We're, we're supposed to do things that show the world, that provoke the world, the Bible says, to godly jealousy. And, I mean, this show does not do that, it, at least the entire cast. And I'm hoping that some way, somehow, that, you know, Tara emerges as this, the hero and really shows that she is a true believer and that people can surround it. And so at the end of the day, you know, I'm thinking that this is going to be just an hour-long, wonderful time for people to really see us, you know, be Christians on TLC. And I've come to the conclusion that it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's entertainment. I didn't want it to be that. I pray for some that it will answer some issues of like, well, you know, hey, I went to a new state and, and, and I went out there to, to, to take a job and I lost it. I, I liken what happened to me like this um, because I paid my way out here. I don't know if they'll say it on the show, but it cost me nearly $60,000 to move my family out here. Mm -hmm. So I had really believed in this church and what we were doing. Um, it's equivalent to like a girl who's p promised, um, look, you get on the bus, you pay your bus ticket, you come to Hollywood and I'll make you a star. And so she gets there and then the man takes advantage of her. I don't want to be too graphic. And then says, goodbye, get out. That's how it felt to me because mm -hmm. they got rid of us for basically no reason at all. And that's kind of been something that I had to carry into this show. And then dealing with these people, and you think that they're going to be sensitive, you think that they're going to be loving, and you think that, you know, love is patient, love is kind, right? Love doesn't envy, love doesn't provoke. There's a scripture that I read recently that really blessed me in Galatians 5. It says, don't be conceited provoking one another and envying one another. And I think it was the conceit of the people on this show and this desire to shine and be stars and do whatever it takes to be in the limelight that caused them to actually provoke envy, mm -hmm. jealousy, all these things that shouldn't even be named among us. The Bible says as a, that, it, that if you name the name of Christ that you shouldn't even have iniquity named among you, you know? And I mean... It's sad, <laughs> and I know you haven't seen the first episode, so you don't know a lot to ask me, but since it aired, I'm just kind of giving it out there for your listeners to say, please don't judge it based on the first episode. You know, watch it all the way through before you make a final determination on the Lewises. That's my prayer, and I'm not trying to be selfish. I mean, do it with the entire cast. Give everybody the benefit of the doubt. But I think in the first episode, some people, they're going to remove all doubt for you. Mm. But for us, please watch it all the way through. I didn't do this to make fun of Jesus. I didn't do this to act a plumb fool or anything like that. One scripture that's really helped me through this is um, Paul says this in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 4 uh, and 9. He says that God chose to display the apostles last as men condemned unto death. We are a spectacle. Another, the Greek there means theater to both angels and men. And that's what I feel like right now, a spectacle, mm. theater. You know, I'm just, I'm just this guy on a stage, and, and it may be easy for people to point fingers and say this and say that. But after eight episodes, hopefully they'll look at the Brian Lewis character and say, you know, I like that guy, and I can relate with him, and he loves Jesus and he's living for Jesus. Wow. I, I, I just want to know, how do you feel now about your castmates after you've seen the first episode? Has your mindset, your opinion of them have changed? Do you think you have a relationship with them? Or do you just think it's just on television and that's it? You don't want to have anything to do with them? Um, I would say this is that, you know, I have really keen discernment and I felt 
that they were the the what they were doing early on. I mean, I had obviously my wife's testimony, and then you just you just know people, right? When you 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 can kind of gain a discernment and see their mannerisms and their actions and being in scene. And so the first thing is that what I had discerned about these people, the envy, the jealousy, that was all there, and just the ignorance and the fact that. Um, and I'm really going to answer your question, but I'm just getting some things out. The fact that, uh, you know, a first lady does not mean pastor, and it doesn't mean fivefold ministry. A first lady is not even a term that's recognized by the entire church. It's not even a biblical term. Um, you can marry a pastor and become a first lady. It doesn't mean you know any scripture. It doesn't mean you know any Bible. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you have even had a long-standing relationship with Christ. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you... I uh, have the same level of understanding uh, as your husband pastor. That all came to pass. And this is the thing, is that I really wanted to try to like these people. I wanted to walk in love. At the end of this, I love them at this level. I love them to the point where I want to see them repent. I want to see them be honest and true. I want to see their heart break as much as mine breaks. I, wanna, I want them to feel as crushed about this as I do, and maybe I'm a little bit more dramatic because I'm Jewish, I don't know, <laughs> but um, I, I want them to be converted in their soul, not just repent, but be re- converted so that times of refreshing can come, and, and this is it. I do not like them. Mm-hmm. I don't like any of the cast members except my wife, my sons, and my daughter. <laughs> there is potential for the relationships to grow. Uh, but the one who's teaching his children to have sex before marriage and calling himself a pastor, First Corinthians 5 talks about not even sitting down to have dinner with these people. And I, I was at the house having dinner. Now, I didn't know what they were doing. But at this point, we are in such disagreement on the word, on doctrine. And a lot of people will treat, teach the traditions of men as the, as the commandments of God. So many people, they know not the scriptures nor the power of God. Mm. And it's, it's such an uncomfortable thing to deal with people that don't understand holiness. Holiness is do what God says to do and don't do what he says not to do. Okay. Live for God. Grow in godliness. Allow yourself to be sanctified. Don't just stay unregenerate and, and stay in a low-level state, but grow. You know, Joyce Meyer is one of my favorite preachers, and she says this, God loves you where you're at, but he loves you enough to change you, too, right? Mm -hmm. He loves you just for who you are, and he loves you enough to change you. I don't know about you, but being in Christ means that you are a new creation, that all things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. I don't like this concept of I'm a sinner. I am not a sinner. I am not under the law. I don't know about you, but if you're going to be a sinner, that means you're going to be judged by the law. I am under grace. I got a free gift on my life. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm a king. I'm a priest. I'm a chosen uh, generation of peculiar people, you know, holy nation. I'm I'm not. I'm not what the devil says I am. Now, Brian, I'm not what I say I am. As a matter of fact, I'm so thankful, like David. I'm glad that God does not impute iniquity to me or deal with me according to my sin. I'm Mm -hmm. saved. I'm saved. I am not a sinner. I'm under the blood. I'm under the law of faith. And even if I do sin, the blood still cleanses me. If I confess my sin before him, then he is just and righteous to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. If I walk in the light as he is in the light, then I can have fellowship with these people, and the blood of Jesus cleanses me. You know, being a Christian doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you might not even slip and fall. But the Bible says seven times a righteous man falls, but he gets back up again. The whole story of being a Christian is get up. Don't stay down. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself based on your color or your circumstance or your condition or wherever you are in life. But let the kingdom be exalted. Let the, seek ye first the kingdom of God, not your color, not your blackness, not your Jewishness, not your whiteness, not none of that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then all things will be added unto you. Brian, God wants you to be right. Brian, I want to huh? ask you this question. I want to ask you this quick question. If the show becomes a success and they want to renew the show for a second season, hey, yeah. <laughs> would you and your wife sign back up? I don't know, because where I'm at right now, 
He said, I don't want to do any scenes with these cast members anymore. I don't want, to, I don't, I don't want them at my home. Hmm. I mean, there's certain people that I definitely wouldn't have to my home. It's like, I don't know if I could have any of the women to my house. I'll tell you that right now. Mm. I don't know if I want to be in scene with these people. I don't know if I want to go to their events. I, at this point, I have to see this whole show play out. Based on episode one, if you're saying if you had to make your decision based on episode one, I would say no, I wouldn't want to sign up because I don't want to be a part of it. Now, if I can be a part of it where I'm married to Tara and my kids and I, we just interact with her and she goes and she's, you know, the soldier and the God's warrior and got to deal with these people, that's one level. But at this point, I don't believe that this show is going in a direction that is bringing honor and glory to God based on episode one. And so I don't even know if it'll go into a season two. I don't even know if it'll be a hit. Um, They didn't even run commercials for it. And here it is, the actual premiere, the television premiere, is supposed to be Tuesday. Hmm. Okay. Because I'm wondering, so, uh, you know, because we know the same company that produced your show was the same company that did The Real Housewives of Atlanta. So we know that their mindset already is dealing with mess. They they deal with, um, um, what's, what's a good word for it? Sensationalism. They like that. So did you expect them to do something? Cladiness. There you go. No, because we were told by the president of the same company that produces Real Housewives that he wanted to show the church in a positive light. Mm. That at the time we were approached with the show, Whitney Houston had passed away, and the whole world was watching the church. And they felt like this was a great time to allow people to have some insight into the church, into church people. And what's great is that, you know, pastors are people, too. Mm -hmm. First ladies, pastors' wives, preachers' wives, just wives of pastors, whatever you (laughs) want to call them. We are human. We have our our great moments, our not-so-great moments, our ups, our downs, our struggles, our joys, you know, the same thing that everybody else has. But we do have this pressure on our lives of showing that we walk by faith even though you know sometimes we may be struggling with our faith i like how td jake says that he says leading while you're bleeding and i thought i think that's that's good i mean we're not all bleeding you know i mean there's some great moments and i think being used of god is one of the greatest things that that you could ever experience in life is to to pray for somebody or just lay hands on them and see them delivered and set free or just see somebody come to christ or have a breakthrough you know this is why we do it to be vehicles and vessels for him but we were told that this was going to be different i have a letter written from the um the guy who was basically the the, the casting vice president on this to the two uh, founding pastors of the church i came out here to the kind of show that they wanted to present they sold it that it was going to be showing the wife and the church and they had done Oprah behind the scenes and they really wanted to really do a positive uplifting type of enlightening takeaway show but the field producer that they assigned to this was somebody that had done like the real world and basketball wise and everything Mm. and so we already knew kind of the direction because they have a formula now they told us that originally that they wanted this to be like a wives show but the husbands on the show presented such a standard that it, there became you know some substance and content to the show you know i don't watch the real housewives of atlanta i i watched it a few times to kind of gain some insight into maybe the wives shows but i wound up turning it off because i got so grieved you know uh, even though they bleep profanity for me, you know, if I hear it, it grieves me. I'm not coming against these women. I don't know these women, uh, you know, and I know that the show is successful. But for me, my prayer was that this show, and what I have believed was that this show is going to be something different and special profiling. Family, you know, showing different interaction, and maybe it will. I don't know. You know, I, too, am basically speaking about something before I know the end of it. I'm just telling you based off episode one that 
I thought it was going to be different. Wow, you know, I'm kind of shocked. Now, how do you feel, Brian? Tune in to see what happens. Brian, how do you feel knowing that you have a TV show, Phenomenal Life, today? And what they're showing on television, it doesn't look so phenomenal. Now, I have not seen it, but according to you, it doesn't look like it's a phenomenal life. Like when you said they wouldn't, um, you mentioned about, you know, when they call the cops, that doesn't look so phenomenal. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, me telling the joke is not what bothers me because mm-hmm. I, I tell that joke from the pulpit. But it's know? how they edited it to make it look like right. your life what is not so phenomenal. What it makes me feel is, mm-hmm. like I told you, that... Um, I may never be able to pastor a church again after mm-hmm. this. I may never be invited to pastor a church. This may actually affect our television ministry, which is in its, you know, it's still in its, um, you know, infant stages. I mean, uh, we are completely financing it, and we've been financing it since we started filming the show. So we've been financing it for six or seven months. And, um, you know, I don't know if it'll draw response. Uh, I, I don't know what will happen, but to me, I've always said this, we all have something to lose except one family who doesn't have a church or a TV ministry or anything. But we have something to lose because the Real Housewives can act any kind of way and it won't affect their brand. We can act a certain kind of way and it will affect our ministry because in church, You've got to be perceived as a certain way. Do you want to hear marriage from a guy that says he's had to call the cops or the cops were called? Well, yes, if you know the details that it was early on in their marriage and it was because they were so loud, Mm -hmm. you know. But, hey, that's real talk, and maybe people can identify with that, Mm -hmm. and maybe their marriages could be better. All I can say is this, is that um, Tara and I came from two different backgrounds, two different cultures. I was a a Jewish man, but not a believing Jew at the time, meaning like I didn't really even practice Judaism. She was uh, just rededicated her life to Jesus Christ. I mean, look, and then I received Christ, and I have to go through all the different deliverance that I need to go through from my past. I mean, I didn't get saved until I was nearly 28. So, I mean, we went through a lot. When I married Tara, I became a husband, a father, a provider, and I didn't have to do any of those things prior. I mean, I just... Uh, I was coming through law school when I met Tara. I mean, you know, I was basically on a different track in life. And, um, you know, but Jesus can come into your life and change everything, and he chose to use Tara to be the instrument and the vessel to to bring himself to me. So that's great. I want people to know that life is phenomenal. It's not perfect, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta you got to make life phenomenal, and you start making it phenomenal by believing his word, by practicing his word. You know, you, you, you honor me with your lips, but, but your heart is far from me. Or, you know, you, you deny me in works. It's like people can profess Christ, but they deny him in the works they do. I hope that through the course of this show, they see the works that make them want to tune into Phenomenal Life today. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, and not that I haven't been. I'm just saying, like, dude, that's a, just a figure of speech. I don't know ultimately where Phenomenal Life today is going to be. I don't know if I might transition into the Dr. Brian show and be more of a primetime interview style show uh, and still be a strong Christian, but then, you know, be like Dr. Phil. I don't know. I mean, at this point, I am really doing an Abraham move, man. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I am going, I'm, in a, I'm in a place I don't know, you know. I mean, I feel like a, have you ever gotten into a strange place and, mm-hmm. and felt strange? And I mean, so this is a strange place. I feel like a foreigner where I'm at. And I'm walking on the water at the same time, trying to believe God, you know. And it's a hard place to be. Now, I'll share this with you. I prayed and I think it was yesterday the Lord spoke to me in my heart, and he said that I would be the most relatable character on the show. Mm. And that blesses me because people were able to relate to Jesus. Mm -hmm. What I love about Jesus is he wasn't so relatable that he became like others, but he was so relatable that they wanted to become like him, Mm. you know? And so tax collectors, sinners, uh, you know, um, prostitutes, they come out of their sin because this guy is so real and he loves them where they're at he loves them enough to tell them about themselves like the woman at the well but he doesn't judge her you know what about the woman caught in adultery and so that's what i would say to people who are watching this and i even have to say it to myself 
let he who be without sin cast the first stone. Let's not cast stones until we see the entirety of this show. I can tell you I'm kind of grieved off episode one, but hopefully as we progress, it, it, it will turn around. Uh, the editing is not the best. The music is not the best. It's not put together very well. And so that, that adds to it not being um, as polished as I would like it. And then, you know, people are going to identify with different women on this show. And um, I also realized that some women did not uh, represent Christ completely and totally, and that's sad for me. And I even spoke to one husband about it today, and he's, he's going to believe what he wants to believe. I'm going to believe what I want to believe. Mm -hmm. One of the husbands, I wouldn't even talk to him because I didn't see the value in it, meaning like, why well, cast your pearls to swine and give what's holy to the dogs? And, I, and what I mean by that is that early on in this show, one of the husbands took information from a scene that he and I and one other pastor were in, took it back to his wife who was not in a scene, and she began to use it in another scene with my wife to bring it up. And, and I called him and I said, you know, that's not cool, man. You know, basically I was like, how are you going to take that and, 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 you know, now she's coming and she's attacking my wife based on something that you agreed with me on because he agreed with me. The scene didn't make it into the show, but it, 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 it was a scene where all three of us as pastors agreed on having a pastoral meeting without allowing a, somebody who was not of the faith into this meeting. And um, I tried to address it with him, and he said, it's just television, man. Mm. And see, I'm at the place where I don't want to put my Christianity to the side for television and then pick it back up again when I'm not on camera. Right. Wow. And uh, so I realized I can't talk to these people that are willing to go any kind of way. And then they, 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 I love how people like to use that, well, you know, we're just being relatable or we're just drawing people. And, you know, you got to water down the gospel. You don't have to water down the gospel at all to reach people where they're at. Mm -hmm. You really don't. Wow. God's word is true and the Holy Spirit does the drawing. All we have to do is be faithful. So at the end of the day, when I have to give an account before God, he knows what was edited, and he knows what was changed. And I think one of the hardest things to do for most of us as, as believers, as people, just humans in general, is to only care what God thinks right. and not what other people think. People are going to label us one way or the other. You know, People are going to love me, and people are going to hate me. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter, right? Because God, in the end, God loves me. Now, Brian. And I know that... I hear that I hear that you're grieved. How is Tara feeling after watching the episode? She's just as grieved as I am, if not more so. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, like I wanted to call everybody right away and just read them. You know, like <laughs> Harlequin. I, I wanted to, what I call Harlequin. I want to read you and trash you. You know, the Bible talks about rebuke with all authority, honey. I, I can rebuke with the best of them. I can write fortune letters. I mean, look. I mean, look. You know, I'm Jewish. Prepare for shock and awe. You know what I'm saying? But I, I realized that I got to submit myself to the Word of God no matter how I feel. And so. I realize you don't overcome evil with evil, but you overcome with good. So I realize if I'm not in a place to talk to these guys, because I wouldn't talk to the wives. I don't believe that's appropriate. I think the husband, a husband needs to talk to a husband. But since I wasn't in the right place, I didn't call any of them. Uh, now, I asked my wife not to text or talk to them, but she got some texts from the women and began to text them back, and she rebuked them. Mm. And she let them know that, she, when we are doing media and stuff like this, that we're going to bring correction. And they feel like um, that we're threatening. And we are not threatening. We're going to bring correction, truth, rebuke with all authority. The word is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. And God is going to vindicate us. You know, no matter what people say about us on the show, God is going to vindicate us. He is going to vindicate his elect. And... Um, Tara is a strong woman, woman of God who doesn't like to be um, talked about wrong. But we are thankful that blessed are them that are persecuted falsely for my sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And so I know I'm giving you a lot of word, and thank God you're not telling me don't use the scripture. <laughs> you know, I'd be crazy to say that. I would be crazy to say that. I mean, the thing is, is, is that, 
I'm sure Tara's not somebody that would, um, you know, that wants to bring hurt to somebody, but she's she's just as frustrated. I don't think that she wants to be involved with them either. Mm-hmm. We both have to see how this plays out. She says that I was not in the scenes with her, and, I mean, she suffered greatly, and she's basically telling me if you're stressed about what you saw episode one, wait till you see all the different episodes where she's got to deal with all of these people who are at different levels of their faith and their walk. It's like Paul saying, I had to labor for you again. It's like these people are babes in their walk, especially the women. I'm not going to say the husbands. The husbands, most of them, not all of them, but most of them are on a different level. And, um, you know, so, I mean, she's dealing with this. Mm. She's dealing with it. I mean, she's let them know where she stands. And like I said, I don't know if there will be, if we will be on this, for season two who knows if if the network will even want us who knows if we're what they're looking for i don't want to ruin things for myself but at the same time how can i say this i want to be i want to do what's right but i don't want to do what's wrong in the sense of this is that i want to do what's going to make good quality television but at the same time i want it to be kingdom minded and kingdom oriented and this is where we get into uh the dilemma because they're not they're not kingdom minded or kingdom oriented would i like to see the money because we don't see big money from season one we almost see nothing um you don't really see anything in, unless it's a hit till season two season three so would i like to see some pecuniary value for our investment yes but is it worth my soul no I know that's At right. At the end of the day, was it profit a man to gain the whole world and, and yet lose, lose his soul? soul. That's I mean, right. Wow. So now, it's a difficult place. I'm really glad that you were able to share that with us today, and especially all those that are going to be um, watching the show, because I'm sure there's people that are anticipating it. But although you said they didn't show a lot of commercials for you know, advertising the sisterhood, who knows that might just be God's way of not allowing people maybe to be drawn to what you thought was going to be something godly. God has a way of closing right. doors and shutting stuff down because we know most networks do a lot of commercial advertising to bring people to the network that day to watch that particular show. So we know that God has his hands on it. Nothing goes unseen, you know, when it comes to the Lord. So we know God has his hand on it and he's going to be in control in the end. He's always in in the beginning too it's funny that you're saying that because um i was uh you know thinking lord why aren't the commercials running and now (laughs) i realize sometimes god may be preventing maybe he's preventing people from watching it because it will disparage his name not everybody but if you just look at the show as a whole as a whole whether tara and i are on it or not i'm not a fan yet you know, and I'm <laughs> on the show. And, yeah, and, and that's amazing for you to be a Christian, to be a pastor and to see a show that you are on and not like the show. Now, you know, that says a whole lot about the show where you come away from a show that you are on grieved and basically almost saying, I wouldn't even watch that show if I was on it or not. I feel like the kid from two and a half men, you know, how he kind of came out and made that statement. Um, I didn't realize, I, I, I did not realize the content of the show until episode one. Remember, I'm not in scenes with all the other husbands, you know, all, you, meaning like I'm not there all, the whole time. I'm not directing this. I don't know what's taking place at somebody else's house. How did I know somebody was handing out handcuffs and putting condoms on bananas? I mean, mm. I, you know, how do I know these things? How did I know these women were talking about us behind our back and trying to diminish us and, and tarnish our names? I mean, you know, I didn't know any of this. All I knew was what we brought to it, and I still was stressed by what my wife's commentary was from all her interaction. But I was hoping for the best. Now, what I saw in episode one, other than us, because I think we were off the chain, <laughs> was the word. <laughs> With support the Lewis's, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, did they, did they show you at all quoting any scripture or going to church, something that would bring light to the Lord or everything was just cut out and basically what we're going to be watching is just a bunch of darkness? I think Tara said Lord one time while she was working out in our scene, and I thought our working out scene was cute, so I think I might edit it down to just our working out scene and throw it on YouTube, but I don't 
me anywhere else. Like I told you, I, I was preaching. I gave them a segment of preaching, but they only used like the personal part where I said what I was anointed to do, which I don't really like because I think that we should be saying what Christ has anointed us to do. But, you know, look, we're human. We sometimes say things you know, in a, in a way, and people understand what we mean. When I, if I say I'm anointed, it means that it's really coming from the Lord. Um, I, I don't remember, like one of the husbands and I were talking today on the phone, and his whole church scene was edited out. The other, one of the other pastors, if you look at the, the scene where he's preaching, it's just one sentence, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it down completely, but it's like, you can still have Jesus and do whatever you want to do. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, they, whoever did this, this was an attack. This is an attack show. Now, they give the coming attraction for next week because me and one of the pastors, we get into it over righteousness. It looks like we're about to throw down, and I don't want to ruin it. Just tune in. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they did that so people can tune in and be like, ooh, that's going to be good. You know, right. and they fighting you know, over the word. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, I would do things like that, are, that, that might bring glory to the kingdom that might not be traditional for example like uh my sons love wwe the world wrestling entertainment and if i was to go on there as a guest and throw down a little bit even at 43 i would do it you know if it would bring glory you know if i can you know say okay my character is mr phenomenal and you know you love god <laughs> you know i'm the i'm the pastor of pain the apostle of agony no i'm just kidding <laughs> But, but th- I'm just, we have to be creative in our approach. That's basically what I'm trying to say here with the WWE or the reality. Creative. We got to go into places that are non-traditional, but let's not lose who we are in the process. Wow, I'm, I'm glad you're able right? to share. Uh, yeah, and you don't want to lose who you are in the process of it. And, and sometimes too, I think lights, camera, action for some people will cause them to sell out, want, wanting to be that person who's um, talked about a lot on the show, wanting to get a lot of camera time because they are trying to do something with their career. But it's just sad that some individuals have to push Jesus to the side in order to do that. But what, like you said, what does the profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Some people will give in exchange for their character, for well, their each soul. Each person did this for a, a purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure each one of us, if we were where we really wanted to be in our ministerial station, we wouldn't have chosen to do the show. I'm just going to be for real. Like, if we all had the churches we wanted, you know, if we were T.D. Jakes, we probably wouldn't do it, right? Right. Because we we're already at a certain level. So everybody on this show was hungry for something, whether it was recognition, whether it was fame, whether it was money, whether it was a second chance. It could be anything. Not all of it is a sin. We all have different motivations. For us, we had a motivation to have a second chance as well as to advance the kingdom of God as best we could through the medium of television. We were standing on being living epistles. That's really what our heart is. And so I'm hoping that over the course of these episodes, you'll see that we want to be living epistles, that we have the word written on our heart, that we're known by all men, that, that you know us by our fruit. You look at each character and see whether they really bear fruit. They may be entertaining to watch, but are they truly citizens of the kingdom? Or are they citizens of self? Mm, You'll see it. That's good. Well, Brian, I want to thank you so much for sharing that with us on the show. Because uh-huh. basically what you did, you enlightened all of us, number one. And you uh-huh. you did. You know, before we see the show, you're allowing us to kind of like take a look. You told us the truth of what happened with the church. Because I'm sure... Many people would adopt the same mentality as the other castmates. Well, why did they leave? Did they get fired? Something don't smell right. You know how people are, and they're watching right. it because we think the editing is true. And we think it's true to life. And right. you let us know that it's not true to life. There was a lot of that that was cut out that we don't know. So what you did for us was fill in all the gaps before we saw the show. <laughs> right. I'm trying to stay away from storylines. Hopefully they don't sue me. Um, you know. Correct. Yeah, I got a lawyer who never lost a case. I know that's right. Preach it. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> but, it, but it was great, though, and I want to thank you. If people wanted to follow you, are you on Twitter? I know you're on Facebook. Can you give all your contact information? And also, too, yeah. a little bit about the um, Mom Fit brand as well. So everybody's trying to get okay. in shape for the new year. So tell us about great. that. Great. Well, I mean, you can find us at uh, on Facebook at Phenomenal Life. You can find us on YouTube at Phenomenal Life, Twitter at One Phenomenal Life, uh, Flickr, if you want to see some photos of us, at Phenomenal Life, LinkedIn at Phenomenal Life. <laughs> and also, um, we have the MomFit brand, which you, you can find us at MomFit or MomFit for Life. Just Google that. I mean, and we've got all the different things there. But MomFit is really a... It's becoming a, a global fitness brand for moms with my wife as the central focus. She's a, a certified fitness instructor, a nationally certified fitness instructor, as well as a nationally certified sports nutritionist. And, uh, you know, this was a dream that we had. And one of the good things about reality television is that this is giving us a platform to showcase not just Phenomenal Life Today, but MomFit, which is this brand that had been a few years in the making but is now finally getting its opportunity. Uh, we have um, the apparel, and we're putting together these, uh, these series of uh, eight um, uh, one-minute episodes of three exercises called the MomFit Minute, and we actually have a promo that we're putting out there that Tara's exercising, and she did these filmings in L.A., and it's really going to be great. It's going to inspire people to to live better, uh, to be stronger, to be healthier. You know, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and so we want to have bodies that are fit, you know, for a witness. You know? Right. We want a witness <laughs> right, you know. That's good. Uh, Tara's 41 years old, and, I mean, she does not look older than, like, when I first met her. She was 25. I mean, she is gorgeous. And she's hot. my age, right? Okay, we're both 41, and look at her figure. Really? She's the bomb. <laughs> You know, so I mean, I'm thankful and, you know, she puts a lot of effort and energy into it, but I really believe that she can uh, help people achieve the same level of fitness that she has. That's good. Well, we're really excited to definitely see the the 60 minute, uh, 60 second videos. I want to thank you again for coming on the show. And if you want to come back on the show and do another commentary after another episode, please feel free. We would love to hear your commentary on the show about the episodes. Oh, sure. You know, to, you know, yeah, if you I need to clear everything up. I mean, that's what I live for. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, but at least you got a place where you can come and set the record straight. So, if you want to set it straight, by all means, come on the show and we're going to let you set it straight. Oh, well, I appreciate you so much. I thank God for what you're doing. You have such impressive guests and um, your presentation is second to none. Uh, I'm going to have to hire the people you got working for you to start working for me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I really support you. And I, I think my wife told me that you're moving into television. And yes. so we will just definitely keep you in prayer and thank God for you. Thank you so much, Brian. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. And please tell your wife I said hello. Oh, I will. God bless you so much.